Um, Bulare, Bulacia from Mombasa. My name is uh, Vasava Hoyt, and I have been a flight attendant for, I beg your pardon, I was a flight attendant for uh, almost 18 years. And um, experiences that I have faced on board, you can actually categorize them under the medical category or under customer service. Um, all my workmates know that I am a known as medic, a uh, medical condition I have. And uh, over the time frame of that 17 years, I've been able to help in that capacity, my knowledge and my experience as an asthmatic. On one occasion, we uh, took a family of three, mother and two daughters, back to New Zealand. And something that I've always noticed is that they will tend to pack their Ventoline inhaler in the um, chicken piece, which can be brought, and this device can actually be brought on board. Uh, on that particular day, we had a, um, a little girl, 10 year old, uh, Ruby was her name, and uh, it became an uh, incident report. She found it difficult to breathe. And after going through the, um, the sequence of trying to find out the real uh, cause of what had happened, found out from her mom that she was asthmatic and that she was on a preventer as well as a ventilator inhaler. And uh, just being able to be there with her and her sister was uh, more overwhelming for me because uh, I know what it feels like to uh, have an asthma attack and not just have an inhaler there. Um, just to bring it into perspective, there is the use of oxygen, however the oxygen on board does not have a, um, a moisture in it that's able to uh, not only moisten the throat but just more so carry the spray form of what we would get in a normal nebulizer down to the lungs. And uh, even if we had given her oxygen, it would uh, more than not in the long term just caused a lot of damage to the lungs. Um, there's another incident where we were on a flight to uh, Honolulu and um, the same. I think I'm, uh, because I'm a known asthmatic, I've become like a magnet for a lot of our uh, flights on board where there's uh, asthmatics. But um, we also help with, you could see, the respiratory part of it, the breathing part. And on this occasion, we had a nervous flyer. And she just found it uh, very difficult to sit in her seat, which didn't help that it was in the middle. Uh, she had the middle seat and uh, it just created that uh, phobia of space as well for her, like not being able to stretch uh, her hands or her legs. And um, she was finding it very difficult to breathe, so I asked her if um, to try and get ahead, uh, you know, just change her perspective on what she was thinking of and just trying to take her mind off it, I just started asking her questions about her family. And um, not long into the conversation, she started to calm down. So it was nice to uh, help this uh, young lady on her way to Honolulu. And um, we had a turbulent, uh, there was a sudden turbulence. So we had to put the seatbelt signs on, but apparently this lady decided to get up right from uh, row 14 and um, <clears throat> make her way down to the back of the aircraft to literally look for me and I was having my rest. So, um, you know, and at that time, you know, rest is everything, yeah? especially when it's that time of the flight and your stomach full from all the food and you just really want to sleep. So needless to say, I, I had a... Uh, sleepless um, nine hour duty and uh, but it was so worth it and we were able to help this young lady and it is very uh, empowering for me 
to also use what I've learned on board as a flight attendant in my uh, everyday walk of life. Uh, going back into my studies, I found that uh, a structure helps uh, timing. I've never been one to be punctual. Um, more than often, I'll have the taxi waiting outside for more than 15 minutes. And, uh, but in hindsight, the four foresight, it has really prepared me well. And um, I'm thankful for that. Thank you.